Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So the eternal nightmare continues for the mentally ill dum-dums of Tesla Q. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Eventually, eventually it'll work. Tesla closing the week out well in excess of $1,200 per share with a market cap in excess of $1.2 trillion. To put things in perspective, just three weeks ago, when I posted my Tesla stock is about to awaken warning video, Tesla stock was $843 per share. We can see in the ensuing three weeks, Tesla stock up almost 45%, about $380 per share. If only the Tesla shorts could have seen that one coming, they could have ducked out of the way and avoided you know what, uh, I'll explain when you're older, let's move on. The subject of today's video isn't about Tesla stock's phenomenal run over the past few weeks. Instead, it's about where to from here. Most of you folks will know that I personally believe there's only one kind of investor, and that is a long-term investor. So everything I discuss in this video is through that lens. And with that said, I believe in the coming months and more importantly, the coming years, Tesla stock has a long way to go. If you're already supporting the channel on Patreon and have exclusive access to my 10 year price targets for Tesla stock, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Even the bear case makes $1,200 per share look like a joke. And if you're not already supporting the channel on Patreon, check out the card in the corner or the link in the description to gain exclusive access to the Tesla stock price targets plus a ton of exclusive content and some perks. So today's video is going to be looking through a narrow lens at one of the most important reasons that I think Tesla stock today is dirt cheap. This is something that no one on Wall Street is truly grasping. Certainly there are some stock analysts on Wall Street beginning to get an inkling of where things are headed, but nobody's getting the full picture. Let me sum it up in a few words. It's over. Tesla is going to leave every automotive manufacturer in ruins and bury them all. And now, let me explain why. If you love crypto, stocks, and free stuff, or just want to help out the channel, check out these great offers. BlockFi are launching the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card. People in the US can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase with no annual fee using the BlockFi Bitcoin rewards credit card. Check out the link in the description. And for a limited time, you can get up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description. And if you'd like up to two Two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $300 just for opening an account. And if you make an initial deposit of $5 or more, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $2,000. Seriously, free stocks? Yes, please. And finally, if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for your support, guys. Let's get back to it. Now guys, before we get any further into today's video, I do want to suggest, in fact, implore you to stick around until the end. I'm going to be building up this case, laying out pieces of the puzzle one after the other. And it's very important if you want to truly understand where I'm coming from and what the implications are for Tesla that you hear everything I have to say. If your girlfriend's begging you to come back to bed or your mum's nagging you to clean up the basement before you get kicked out of home for good, probably best to save this video for another day when you can watch it in full. And for everyone else, make sure you're sitting down for this. First of all, here's a tweet from the head of Tesla's investor relations. Shout out to Martin. I quote, Modeling EV market share growth doesn't make too much sense in my opinion. EV market growth equals capacity slash production growth of competitive EVs. Competitiveness mainly depends on price, range, value, appeal, while capacity mainly depends on sell availability. Quite a few investors seem to be somewhat confused by this tweet from Martin. They weren't exactly sure where he was coming from. Let me explain. Per my tweet, elaborating on what Martin was getting at, quote, demand for compelling EVs is far, far in excess of current supply. As supply, production increases, costs come down, unlocking more demand. This is a flywheel. Incremental cost decrease equals exponential demand increase. People don't get this. Martin is right. So I want to expand individually on each of the points I made in this tweet. The first one is that demand, caveat there for compelling electric vehicles, is far, far, not a little bit, far in excess of current supply. You may wonder, how could I possibly know this? What proof do I have for this statement? How can I be sure that this is correct? Where's my evidence? Well, I'm glad you asked. Number one, and this is an important one, Tesla has sold every single vehicle they have ever 
produced in the history of the company. Now, in and of itself, this doesn't really tell us a whole lot. After all, pretty much every automaker out there sells every vehicle they ever make. But coupled with the fact that Tesla's been increasing their production as fast as they possibly can throughout the entire history of the company, we have a very compelling data point. Tesla cannot make enough vehicles to meet existing demand and they've never been able to do so. Cast your mind back to March 2020 when practically everyone thought the world was ending. Except this guy, feel free to go fact check me on that. Listen to what I was saying about Tesla stock, the automotive industry, and here's one of the predictions I made at the time. I predicted that Tesla would still sell every single vehicle they made during the worst of the pandemic, clearly demonstrating while other automotive sales absolutely collapsed. Tesla was still unable to meet their existing demand, even though global demand for vehicles had plummeted. And guess what happened? That's right, Tesla sold every vehicle they produced during the worst time we've seen in decades. This provided an extremely valuable data point to even the dullest of dull. We discovered during this time that Tesla didn't just have a little bit more demand than they were currently able to meet, but a shit ton more because they still managed to sell every vehicle they produced, even though there was a huge collapse in vehicle sales at the time. And maybe you're wondering, did Tesla have to cut their prices, reduce the price of their vehicles to sell them all? No. Now onto the next point in my tweet. As supply increases, costs will inevitably come down. If you're producing at higher volumes, your fixed costs stay the same. In addition, if you're purchasing parts, you can purchase in bulk, you get bigger discounts for buying in bulk. In addition to that, there's certain manufacturing techniques, blah, 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 that only make sense at certain volumes. For example, the Gigapress, huge single piece rear casting for vehicles, saves hundreds of parts and processes, eliminates a ton of robots, blah, blah, blah. The long and short of it is, the more vehicles that Tesla or anyone produces, the cheaper it is for them to produce each vehicle. As a result, if they choose to, they can reduce prices on their vehicles. And this is the real kicker. As prices come down, demand increases, and it is not a linear relationship. And what I mean by this, for example, if you reduce the price of a vehicle by say 5%, you'll increase the number of people who can now afford it, it's now within their budget, by significantly more than the percent you reduce the vehicle price by. There's a leveraged effect here. This should make intuitive sense to most people watching, and if not, you may be beyond my reach, but I will try to come at this from one final angle. Jump online, do some homework, and look at how many vehicles are being sold in certain price categories globally per year. You'll discover that the cheaper a vehicle is, the more people who are buying it. And as I said, it is not a linear relationship. To give you guys a really simple example, I'm just using made up numbers here just to illustrate the point. Just imagine that the number of people buying a $100,000 vehicle or more per year was 1 million. If you cut that number in half and there was a linear relationship, you'd expect the number of people buying a $50,000 vehicle to be twice the amount buying a $1 million vehicle. In other words, 2 million per year. However, you'll discover that the number of people actually able to afford a $50,000 vehicle is many multiples beyond that. The same can be said again. Look at how many people are actually buying a $25,000 vehicle. It ain't 4 million a year. As I said in my tweet, an incremental decrease in the price of a vehicle will create an exponential increase in demand. So in a nutshell, as Tesla increases the number of vehicles they're producing, shout out to two new enormous factories, Berlin and Austin, that are going to more than double Tesla's capacity in just 12 or 18 months, the price it actually costs Tesla to produce each vehicle is going to fall considerably. And yep, you guessed it, this means that if Tesla wants or needs to, they can reduce the price of their vehicles incrementally and create an exponential increase in demand. But here's the real kicker. They don't need to. But Stephen, how could you possibly know that, you arrogant prick? I'm so glad you asked. Here we are over on thestreet.com. Shout out to Rob Maurer from Tesla Daily. Great little article talking about Tesla once again raising, not reducing, raising the prices on their vehicles. Let's just get straight to the meat and bones of this article. Now, I know this is a little bit small. Sorry, it's a little bit cold today, but we'll persevere. What we're looking at here, at the start of 2021, the price of Tesla standard range, long range and performance Model 3, same for the Model Y plus Model S and X variants as well. Price increases are in green here, and we can see the change since January 1st, okay? The Model 3 standard range from Tesla has increased by $7,000 this year. The long range by $4,000, and the performance by $4,000 as well. Now we move on to the Model Y. The long range has increased by $8,000. The performance by $3,000, Model S, Long range by 15 grand, plaid by 10 grand, and Model X long range by $15,000. Now, let's do a little bit of math here. Let's just use the Model 3 standard range as an example. A $7,000 price increase. So the Model 3 standard range increased by $7,000. If we divide $7,000 by the original price at the start of the year, 
we see that the price has increased almost 20%. In the case of the Model Y here, we've got an $8,000 increase over the original price of $49,990, a 16% price increase in a single year. Now, remember we talked earlier about a linear decrease in price creating an exponential increase in demand? Well, the reverse is true as well. A linear increase in price creates an exponential reduction in demand. So in the span of less than 12 months, Tesla has dramatically increased the price on their Model 3 and Model Y vehicles. In fact, on all of their vehicles, but let's just focus on these, their big selling high volume vehicles, by more than 10%, in fact, by more than 15% in both cases. Now this is in part to compensate for supply chain challenges, increasing parts costs, increasing materials, blah, 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 blah. But this doesn't entirely account for the price increases in my uninformed opinion. Now, a couple of very important points are just around the corner, so stay tuned. Number one, in case you haven't already noticed, Tesla's gross automotive margins now are around 30%. This is industry leading margins already. Remember, Tesla's cost to produce their vehicles are trending down. Now, of course, there can be fluctuations, parts costing more here and there, but overall the trend is down. So here's how things play out. If the price of Tesla's vehicles stays identical, they're not increasing, they're not decreasing, but they stay identical, yet Tesla's cost to produce them are falling, they're trending down over time, this gap is increased margins, AKA more money in the bank, AKA Tesla is a money printing machine already and it's only going to get better. Alternatively, if Tesla needs to, if they need to generate more demand, they can incrementally decrease the price of their vehicles while maintaining flat margins around 30% and see an exponential increase in demand for their products. But here's the real kicker, the crux of the video. We're over here in the Tesla Design Studio looking at the rear wheel drive Model 3, the artist formerly known as the Model 3 Standard Range. The estimated delivery is June. I'm recording this in November. Let's do some quick math here. December, January, February, March, April, May, June. A seven month wait, more than half a year to purchase Tesla's Model 3. And this is after the price of the Model 3 has increased by almost 20% throughout the course of 2021. Now, if we switch over to the Model Y, same boat, a seven month wait, more than half a year for those people ordering the Model Y today, whose prices increased by about 15% throughout the course of the year. So this tells us a few things. One, the amount of demand for Tesla's products today is absolutely insane, practically unlimited. The fact that they've raised prices by double digit percentages and they have wait times in excess of half a year is just ridiculous. At this point in time, Tesla has been forced to raise the price of their vehicles to ensure that wait times don't become any more ludicrous. This means that they're going to be making way more money on every vehicle sold. They need to do this. They need to pull the levers in terms of price to balance supply and demand because there's only so much time customers will be willing to wait to get their vehicle. Yes, I acknowledge that some of the price increases are to do with temporary supply chain issues and increasing parts costs, but this isn't the full story. We are seeing direct evidence that there is so much pent up demand for Tesla's vehicles that they are being forced to raise prices. And as we know, a consequence of this means that Tesla's going to be making more money on every vehicle they sell. And remember, the more vehicles that Tesla produces, the cheaper it is for them to make each vehicle, meaning their margins will automatically expand over time unless they force their prices down in line with expanding margins. But Tesla will only reduce the price of their vehicles if they can do so having expanded their production capacity so much that it's not going to cause completely unreasonable wait times for people ordering their products. And remember, for every incremental decrease in the price of Tesla's vehicles, the amount of demand increases exponentially. This is a very delicate balancing act. Just because Tesla could reduce the price of their vehicles by $1,000, $2,000, doesn't mean they'll be able to, because again, if the wait times become absolutely ludicrous, just completely unreasonable, it's not gonna fly. Tesla won't do this, I guarantee you. Tesla doesn't want their customers to have to wait an unreasonable amount of time to actually take delivery of their vehicles. And the only way they can manage this is by increasing production and or increasing prices until there's an equilibrium. In short, there's so much demand for Tesla's products that they have been forced to increase the prices and make even more money on every vehicle they sell. Sure is tough to be Tesla. So here's the key point in today's video. As Martin pointed out, there's no point in thinking about EV adoption rates in terms of demand. There's infinite demand. The more EVs are produced, the cheaper they are, which unlocks more demand, there's a flywheel. The only thing to pay attention to, the factor that actually matters in terms of how many EVs will be sold, 
is how many can be produced, okay? I really want to drive this point home. We have reached the tipping point. If Tesla had have produced 3 million Model Ys and Model 3s combined this year, they would have sold every single one of them. Now, I know I've lost a few of you there. You think, how could you possibly know that? You're a moron. But remember, the more vehicles they produce, the lower their costs, economies of scale, blah, 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 which means that they can drive the price down if they need to and unlock exponentially more demand. This is going to remain the situation for years to come. And congratulations for sticking around because you're about to hear the most important point in the entire video, the EV tax credit. So I'll keep this pretty short. We know now that there's an EV tax credit being proposed. It's gonna pass in some form or another. At this point in time, it's looking like people who purchased a Tesla in 2022 and beyond will receive an $8,000 discount. Well, at least if they live in the US. But the problem is, Tesla's already had to increase the price of their Model Y this year by $8,000, and they still have wait times in excess of six months. If you provide another $8,000 discount, they're back to where they were at the start of the year. Not gonna fly. So here's how things play out. Tesla is going to be forced to raise the price of their vehicles substantially. Now, I know this may be a hard pill for some people to swallow, but Tesla will not have a choice. They're not going to allow the wait times for their vehicles to blow out to multiple years. It's just not acceptable. Now, I don't know exactly how much Tesla is going to be forced to raise the price of their vehicles, but there is no question this is inevitable. The consequence of this is that Tesla's margins, the profits, the money that they're making on every vehicle sold is going to increase enormously. Let's do some really rough ballpark numbers just to get a sense of the kind of impact this could have on Tesla's business. Let's just imagine that Tesla meets the incentive halfway, so to speak. They increase the price of their vehicles by $4,000 each. I actually think they'll probably be forced to increase prices more, but hey, let's be conservative here. And let's say that next year in the United States, Tesla sells about 750,000 vehicles. You may argue this will be less. I'm factoring in some production from Austin and increasing production from the Fremont factory as well. Use your own numbers, just trying to illustrate the point. $4,000 of pure profit times 750,000 vehicles is $3 billion to the bottom line. Tesla's Model 3 and Model Y margins in 2022 alone could expand to 40%. We've already established that Tesla will sell every vehicle they make for years to come. It's no longer a matter of demand, it's just a matter of supply. They effectively have unlimited demand. But in addition to that, every vehicle Tesla sells in the United States that's benefiting from the EV tax credit is going to print ludicrous amounts of money. And here's the kicker. The stock market is not expecting this. There are no analysts on Wall Street who are even close to the mark in terms of their estimates for Tesla's margins next year. There are no analysts that are even close in terms of earnings per share. I'm here to tell you, every quarter next year, analysts will miss the mark. Tesla will beat on earnings. They'll beat on gross automotive margins. Analysts will update their expectations for the following quarter. They'll increase their price targets over and over and over. And all year, Wall Street is gonna be chasing Tesla stock increasing their earnings estimates, increasing their delivery estimates, being absolutely blown away by what this company is doing. So my prediction is that throughout 2022, Tesla stock goes higher. Now, yes, there'll be some volatility, short term, I don't give a shit. But at the end of 2022, I am very confident that Tesla stock is gonna be substantially higher than it is today, unless there is an unforeseen disaster or 12. As I mentioned earlier, if you wanna know exactly how much higher, Head over to Patreon, card in the corner, link in the description, sign up, get access to my Tesla stock price targets at 22, all the way out to 2031 in the bear case, the base case, and the bull case. The point is, Wall Street does not see what's coming. Everyone, except maybe a few smart investors watching YouTube to learn about Tesla, is massively underestimating the company. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Don't bet against Elon. But do buy some of the Don't Bet Against Elon merch in the merch store. There's some new mugs available, shirts, phone cases, tough cases for phones, hoodies, long sleeves, you name it. These are great conversation starters and also make wonderful gifts for any morons you know who are currently or have ever previously shorted Tesla stock. Check out the link in the description. Before we wrap up, I have one final, extremely important point to discuss. Thanks for sticking around. This of course relates to the title of this video. It really is over. Tesla is going to leave the entirety of legacy automotive in ruins and bury them all. And 2022 is the year that this total annihilation becomes blatantly obvious. Tesla is the only automotive manufacturer making healthy profit margins, if any margin at all, on the vehicles they sell. And in addition to that, their vehicles are so much more compelling than anything else on offer in the marketplace that they have wait times of more than six months even though they've raised the price of their vehicles by 15 plus percent this year. We've reached the tipping point. There is unlimited demand for compelling electric vehicles at the right price. 
And spoiler alert, there's only one company making compelling electric vehicles at any price, let alone the right price, and that would be Tesla. So consider this video as a warning. I believe I can see what's just around the corner. I also believe that Wall Street and most investors out there, including retail and institutional investors, can't. 2022, in my opinion, is the year that Wall Street finally sees what's been evident to others for quite some time. Tesla has slowly been digging the grave of legacy automotive company after legacy automotive company, and 2022 is the year they start burying corpses. By the end of the year, you'll have to be an absolute moron not to realize that Tesla is the world's most profitable automotive company with ever increasing margins, and more importantly, unlimited demand. And I personally suspect that this is gonna have a very positive impact on the price of Tesla's stock. As I said earlier, if you want to know just how positive of an impact, head over to Patreon with the card in the corner or the link in the description and check out my Tesla stock price targets, in particular, my bull case for 2022. Please, don't say I didn't warn you. Let me know in the comments below if you guys and girls think that the stock market overall is massively underestimating Tesla. If there's anyone out there that you've heard who actually believes that Tesla effectively has unlimited demand, because in my opinion, Tesla builds the cars, they sell the cars, and this doesn't change for at least the next five, if not 10 plus years. Strap yourselves in because it is gonna be a very exciting ride. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card where you can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase. There's a link in the description. You can also earn up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, also linked below. And finally, don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake, also linked in the description. These great offers also help out the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know i read all your comments p.s if you're still watching you're awesome if you'd like early access exclusive videos regular q a's our private discord server and more consider supporting the channel at patreon.com solving the money problem so i can keep creating content for you guys there's a link in the description you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks to learn more click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again